Hey there, welcome back to Treadmill Review Guru. Today I am really excited because we get to review the Assault Runner Elite. As you can see, this is a manual slat belt treadmill. So it does not require electricity. It has unlimited speed. It will basically go as fast as you do. And it is designed for serious athletes, coaches, athletic facilities. So we're going to dive into all the features and specs on this, as well as cover a little bit about running mechanics and how this helps facilitate a good stride. So let's take a closer look at the Assault Runner Elite. So let's take a closer look at who we recommend the Assault Runner Elite for. This is for serious athletes. It is designed to really improve your running mechanics, help you facilitate a good stride with that mid, mid foot strike right on the center of the belt. Um, it's great for HIIT training. CrossFit athletes really like um, this type of treadmill because you can do that inter high intensity interval training and the belt keeps up with your max speed. Uh, so we recommend it to like serious runners, coaches, fitness facilities, um, and athletic trainers that are looking for something high end to really challenge and improve their athletic performance. We don't necessarily recommend this for casual users. You can walk on the belt and it's actually quite comfortable. It does have a little bit of shock absorption, but this is not the type of treadmill where you can just kind of zone out and do your own thing. You have to pay attention when you're on this machine. It's a serious piece of equipment. It requires and responds to your running mechanics and how fast you're going. So it's not really designed for just casual at home use. It obviously doesn't have any video content or subscription options. Um, but let's take a closer look at how it's constructed and the overall design. So let's dive in and take a look at the construction on the Assault Runner Elite. So as I mentioned, this does have a curved belt. You can kind of see that deck is gently curved. Um, and there's a couple different reasons for that. We'll dive into that later, but it changes the design of the treadmill itself. This is a slat belt treadmill. So that means that rather than have a single belt that slides along the top of the deck, you have these individual slats that are floating on top of 100 ball bearings that run along the sides of that deck. And it also has 12 roller guides to keep it in alignment. So it's very um, smooth as you run. It does not go both directions. So I can't push it backwards. It's only going to go forward to allow you to run in a forward position. Um, I really like the side rails on this. They are wider than usual. So these side rails are almost six inches wide um, and they've got really nice texture right there. I find on this machine that I have to use the side rails and the handrails in order to really use the machine correctly. Um, this isn't just you walk, you stand on the belt and then you get off. Uh, you'll find that when you're doing intervals or you've got your speed up, sometimes you have to jump onto those side rails just to let that belt slow down a little bit, or maybe you need to take a breath. So having nice wide side rails, they're wider than my foot, really makes a difference. Now the width of the slats is a little narrower than you're gonna find on a traditional treadmill. So a traditional treadmill, like a folding normal one that you would have at home, um, kind of mid range, is roughly 20 inches wide and usually about like 60 inches long. Um, this, this particular one is 17 inches wide, so it's a little narrower, but it's 65 inches long. So you have considerably more length, um, which is nice, but you do have to pay attention. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is not the kind of treadmill where you just get on and zone out. You've got to make sure that you are centered on that belt and you're not wandering side to side. Um, they say you go where you look. So even if you look to the side, you might find that you travel that way just a little bit. And if your foot um, you know, comes across that side rail, it's gonna kind of slow you down, maybe trip you up a little bit. So you do have to pay attention and it is slightly narrower. But once again, that helps facilitate good running mechanics. You're not wandering all over the place. It keeps your hips in alignment and keeps you moving forward in that sagittal plane. So uh, the uprights, as you can see, are slightly curved back which because of the nature of the design, you're gonna find that you kind of position yourself right in between those uprights and you're gonna use them all the time. Um, so that's, that's the way that, it, that's the reason it's designed kind of like this with a little bit of a floating look up there on the console. The machine itself weighs about 270 pounds. So it's, it's pretty heavy, but it does have a grab bar back here. So, I mean, I can roll it. You've got nice good wheels there at the front. 
so you can roll it if you need to. And it also has these adjustable leveling feet down in the base so that when you put it on your floor, you can adjust the feet, kind of screw them up or down just a little bit so that that deck doesn't rock. Um, so you've got good stability underneath. So obviously there's no motor in this machine. It's all manual powered, which means that you don't have to plug it in. And that's one of the reasons that this is very popular for garage gyms, training facilities, because you can put it anywhere and run on it and you don't have to worry about proximity to a plug or electricity or anything like that. The console is battery powered, so you don't have to plug it in, which is really nice. Uh, the step up height, as you can see, it's a little higher than a traditional treadmill. At the lowest point, it's about 12 and a half inches. So this is gonna require more uh, joint mobility to get on than a standard treadmill, but it's designed for serious athletes for whom hopefully joint mobility isn't as much of an issue. It does have a lifetime warranty on the belt. So these belts are very, very durable. They're um, rubberized, they're, they're flat on the top, they're kind of like a, a V shape, so they're flat on the top and they sit down on those ball bearings. Um, but this belt can withstand hundreds of thousands of miles of distance. The frame and the uprights are all solid steel and then coated for, to be rust resistant. The deck comes fully pre-assembled, which is really nice. You don't have to attach the slats or worry about any of that. All you have to do is attach the uprights and then the console display and attach the console itself to the kind of um, plate on the back. The, the biggest challenge is just to make sure that you don't pinch the wires when you're attaching things. Um, the one thing that's really nice about this, all of the, um, the screws were machine drilled, so it was really easy to attach. Sometimes when we attach some of the uprights and stuff, the holes don't match up or there's a little bit of threading that's off. And so I have to go get one of the bigger guys that's got more forearm strength to really tighten it up for me. Um, this was very clean in the way that it was all drilled out and ready to be assembled. And we always recommend two people simply because you really need somebody to hold the upright while the other person attaches things and screws it tight. Um, but it's certainly not technically difficult. Uh, Assault does cover this with a lifetime warranty on the belt, as I mentioned. You also get 10 years on the frame and one year for parts and labor. So let's take a closer look at some of the features and functionality on the Assault Runner Elite. Okay, so here you can see the console um, and it looks, it looks relatively simple, but it actually has some pretty good functionality in it. This console reminds me a little bit of the Concept2 uh, PM5 simply because you look at it and think, oh, it's just a simple digital display, but then it has lots of different features uh, that you can dive into and access. So just to look real quick at your metrics, you do have time and it's elapsed time. So right there, that's your top metric and then it will keep track of your calories. Uh, you have distance, speed, watts, and pace. And then down here, it will, it will uh, sync with a Bluetooth or Ant uh, chest strap. So you can use a Garmin device or a Bluetooth device and your heart rate will show up right there down at the bottom. You can see it says no signal because I don't currently have a chest strap on. Uh, but then it has different programs that you can run. So the interval programs, if I wanna run an interval program, you have a standard Tabata program that you can run, which is your 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. You can do an inverted Tabata where it's 10 seconds of work with 20 seconds of rest, or you have a custom option. So you could set, let's say you wanted to do a 45, 15 or something like that. And um, I do like that there is a rest light and a work light because I like to run with headphones and listen to music. That really helps me crank up my pace and kind of just stay motivated while I'm running. So rather than respond to beeps on the machine or whatever, you can actually see the lights. The rest light is yellow and then it will go red and then the work light is green. Uh, and then you do have some target programs. So let's say you wanna set a target, you wanna run for a half an hour. You can do that. You can set a target for calories if you want to burn, you know, 500 calories. Uh, you've got one for distance and then obviously back to time. You also have the option of setting heart rate programs. If you're going to do heart rate training and you want to kind of hold it in a specific zone, uh, you, there is that option as well. You can easily change metrics. So let's say that I want to go right here. Right now I've got it at miles per hour. I can change the units and then all of a sudden it's kilometers per hour. And that's a really easy transition. With a lot of treadmills, you have to go in, you have to go to settings, you have to go to speed, you have to go to you know metric versus imperial. This is really easy, just a touch of a button and you can change kilometers to miles per hour. Um, it will do a split time. So let's say that you run one mile and you can hit that button, it'll hold your split time and then you run the second mile, you can compare your split times. And it does have just a little speaker button. So you can turn that, that beep up or down. If you're, you know, obviously if you're listening to music, you just turn it down and if you want that button to beep at you, it will turn it up. 
Uh, there is a comp mode down here, so if I wanna go into comp mode, if I hold both the up and the down button together, now I'm in comp mode. So it's gonna say set your target. So let's say I have a target of a certain distance. Um, I can go up or down, I've got calories time. So let's say you have two runners in your facility and they want to compare their speeds. So you can enter that comp mode, you can have one runner go in, run a mile, and then you're gonna have the other runner go in, run a mile, and the machine will keep track of the difference between the two. So if you're running a competition, that's just kind of a really easy way that you can do it that's, that's integrated right there into the console. Uh, the console is UV resistant. So, you know, it's protected from high sun rays and stuff like that. You can set it uh, by a window or maybe a garage door or whatever, and you'll still be able to see it. And the, the backlit screen really does help. These metrics, even though they're just digital, they're really easy to see. So even if I move around, um, I find that I can see all the different metrics really pretty easy. You have two kind of storage pockets. They've got a nice water bottle holder right there, a little bit of a silicone liner so that it doesn't rattle around too much. I could drop keys in there or a phone. Uh, and then you just kind of have that, that stability from the upright. It doesn't really move around a lot when you're running, so it feels really stable. You have just a little lip right here. If I had a phone, I could set it there or maybe a timer or something. If, if you had something really small that you wanted to set there, you could do that as well. So it's just kind of a minimalist design, but it's very clean and easy to use. Not a lot of clutter. Uh, and once you get started, it responds to you very easily. One thing that I really like about this machine is that it keeps track of your pace in real time. So as I mentioned earlier, rather than just set a seven mile an hour pace and you have to work to keep up, when you're doing sprints, it'll record that pace for you. You might hit a sub five, maybe even a sub four for a few seconds, and it, it will tell you exactly the pace that you're holding at that precise minute. It also provides um, an output of your wattage, which is fun to know if you're training for a specific event and you're trying to calibrate that wattage or work in a specific heart rate zone. Uh, so a lot of really impressive functions on the Assault Fitness Runner Elite. So let's take a look at the functionality of the Assault Runner Elite. Um, this is a different type of treadmill and it takes a little bit of time to get used to. So initially when you start, you wanna make sure that you're kind of right between those uprights. With the nature of the belt, it's designed to facilitate different types of running depending on where you are on the belt. If you want to do sprints or um, intervals or something like that where you really wanna kick up that speed, you're gonna have to scoot up farther to the top of that. And you can see, I even have a hard time, the belt all automatically starts to go faster. So if you're doing sprint intervals or something like that, you're gonna find yourself closer to the top of that curve. Uh, if you're going longer distances, you're gonna be kind of right in the middle of those uprights. One thing I found at the beginning is that I kept getting kind of back here and you lose all momentum if you stand too far back um, because your foot strike is what kind of grabs that belt and moves it along. Um, this burns more calories than running on a regular treadmill because rather than the belt move and you have to keep up with it, you're actually generating the momentum as your foot connects with that belt and pushes it forward, pushes it backwards. So I'm just gonna walk here for a second and you can see those slats, they're really pretty quiet. There's a touch of noise as it kind of rotate, you know, as those ball bearings move over the top of the deck, but it's really not bad. But I do have to pay attention. That's the other thing, is I can't be talking to somebody and having a conversation, looking at my, you know, talking on my phone, looking at my phone. You don't have enough width for that. And this isn't the type of treadmill where it's designed for that. If you're gonna use it, you've gotta pay attention to what you're doing where you are on the belt, both laterally and front to back. So I'll run just for a second. So if I wanna pick up my speed, I just move forward on that belt just a little bit and it's automatically gonna generate more speed. And the belt responds to my foot pace. So if I wanna go faster, and if I wanna slow down, I'm in complete control of the, of the speed of the belt. So finding a nice mid-range run, right here I'm at about seven and a half minute mile, kind of right posi positioned right in the middle of those uprights. You can hear there's just a touch of foot noise. And then as soon as I wanna slow down or get off, that's when the handrails and side rails really make a difference. Here we have Matthew, who is another reviewer we have here at Treadmill Review Guru, and he is going to demonstrate 
how the Assault Fitness Runner Elite sounds and functions for a larger user. So I'm about 5'5", 125 pounds, something like that. Um, Matthew is 6'5", and about 225 pounds. So it will still easily support his weight. Um, and you can see as he walks, he's got his body position kind of right between those uprights. I was probably a little farther ahead of that because I don't weigh quite as much. He can generate more momentum on that deck simply because he has a little more body weight. Um, but he's got plenty of span. So we got nice forward stride here and plenty of kickback at the end. Um, and this is just kind of a, a standard walking pace. So, and you can see this deck just kind of responds to his foot cadence. You've got just a little bit of foot noise, not too much. Nice smooth motion to that belt. It does not flop around at all. The slats do not lift up or move at any point. And you have just the slightest bit of cushioning down underneath. You can see you've got just a touch of flexibility there in that um, adjustable foot. So we'll kick up the pace just a little. You wanna go just a little faster, Matthew? So just a touch more noise as you pick up that speed, just as those slats move across. All right, I'm gonna challenge you to go as fast as you can. Nice. There we go. And you can see when you get to full speed, you've got to use the handrails and the, and the side rails. That's just a very key part of using this treadmill safely. So I'm just going to let Matthew keep walking for a second and talk just about a few of the benefits that you get specifically from using a slat belt treadmill. So rather than the treadmill setting the speed and you work to keep up with it, on a manual treadmill, you set the speed. So you are completely in control of the experience, but it requires a lot more energy on your part. As a consequence, uh, a workout on a manual treadmill, like the Runner Elite, is going to generate, burn a lot more calories than if you were on a manual, or on a, an electric treadmill sort of thing. Um, it also is lower impact than running outdoors. So even though it's been designed to kind of mimic an outdoor stride, an outdoor environment, where you can train for an outdoor event still using an, a, an, a machine, a treadmill, um, it, it absorbs some of that impact so that you're, it's much better than concrete or asphalt or something like that. Those rubberized slats do absorb just a little bit of the impact. And the, and the belt is a little bit shock absorbent. You could even see there was just a touch of shock absorbance in that deck as he ran along. You have unlimited speed potential. And the other thing that I like about this machine is rather than the treadmill just say, ah, oh, it's running seven miles an hour and then you're running seven miles an hour, it responds in real time to your pace. So when you kick it up there, it might show a sub five pace for a few seconds while you generate a lot of speed. And then in real time, it will slow down when you do. So the speed is very, very precise to exactly the pace that you're holding in real time. It also facilitates good running mechanics. So the, because the belt is curved in this way, you can't really um, heel strike too much because you'll end up at the back of the belt and you'll run out of momentum. Um, you can run more on a four foot strike if you're doing like some sprints or intervals or something like that. Um, but it takes a little more energy. So let's just take a closer look at some of the features that facilitate good running mechanics on the Runner Elite. So let's dive in real quick to a quick overview of running mechanics. So the reason that uh, athletes will use a curved manual treadmill is because you are completely in control of the speed but the treadmill requires you to kind of hit that sweet spot with a midfoot strike. If you are sprinting or doing like intervals, you're gonna find that you move farther up on the belt and you're gonna have more of a toe, of like a four foot strike, right? So you got a little more plantar flexion going, um, you're engaging that gastrocnemius and soleus, the Achilles is fired up because you're just really maximizing that energy output and increasing your speed. A lot of times when you're running on a treadmill, it's easy to just kind of wander and you might find that you uh, kind of fall into a heel strike position. On this treadmill, you really can't because if I come back here and heel strike, it slows the belt all the way down. Like it takes too much effort. I'm losing too much energy. So I have to stand right here between the uprights with a nice midfoot strike. It reduces the activation of the tibialis anterior. So I reduce my incidence of shin splints um, and it just kind of moderates that energy so that I am responding to ground forces, moving that belt along. I have a nice stride, not too much forward 
uh, stride, not too much kickback. Your whole foot has to connect to the belt and then you push off with that big toe. So this is a really impressive machine. It's designed for a very specific type of use and it performs really well for uh, what it's designed for. So I really appreciate the fact that this is very quiet compared to other treadmills that you might use. It does not sound like train tracks when you're running on it. Um, the slats do absorb just a little bit of, of impact. So even though this isn't cushioned like you might find on another treadmill where it has a little bit of flexibility in the deck, the slats themselves are rubberized and so you do have a little bit of cushioning, which I, I like a lot. And it facilitates good running mechanics, which is something that a lot of us don't think about a lot of the time, but if you are a serious athlete, it makes all the difference in the world. And it has been designed specifically for people who want to improve their running mechanics, want to improve their form, want to improve their speed, are looking for something that just takes that challenge up a notch, has unlimited speed potential. Um, so we recommend this for coaches, athletes, um, athletic facilities, and other high-end niche gyms, kind of like that. So if you'd like more details, make sure and check out our full written review at treadmillreviewguru.com. For current pricing, click the link below. And as always, we wanna know what you think. Tell us your experience on the Assault Runner Elite. Leave us a comment in the comment section. And if you liked our video, make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. My name's Kristen with Treadmill Review Guru, and I'll see you again soon.